Welcome back to another episode on b Reviews in Gaming and Entertainment. In this episode, we take another look at what if, if anything, has come with my hopeful release of Beyond Good and Evil 2. If you have seen my first video, I go over with the hopes of a release to one of my most beloved games I played when Ubisoft started to make a name for themselves with incredible games from The Prince of Persia, Rayman, Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell, and of course, Beyond Good and Evil. During those nice years with the PlayStation 2 and Xbox, Ubisoft could do no wrong as the years moved forward, also with the 360 and PS3, with Far Cry and Tom Clancy games, Assassin's Creed, more Watch Dogs, The Division, to future partnerships with Avatar and Star Wars, the years just look bright. But with about a nine year in development hell game, like Beyond Good and Evil 2, what is truly going on? Well, with the latest news in 2022, in July, the game is still alive and in, of course, pre-production. Nine years of pre-production, or what, what we call starting over. Well, according to Kotaku, the project has been bleeding cash for several years now, with no real leadership since its original director, Michelle Ansel, left in 2020. With no sense of news or direction, the game is taking on from the past videos that we can see, we can only guess that the game is still an open world game like Assassin's Creed. At least, that is my take so far. But guess what? Ubisoft will start playtesting, that's right, playtesting of the current form or whatever that might mean very soon. I mean, in the last playtest that we've actually had was in 2008, where they have changed directions dramatically. All I can say is, will this be the same? Overall, I'm very excited to see some news, although very little of it, to come out, period. I love the original and loved all the CG movies advertising the future of the sequel, but really can't see if Ubisoft themselves can figure out their old identity to just make great games. Yes, I loved Assassin's Creed Valhalla and still love the character-driven Far Cry 6, but with the state of Ubisoft today, makes me cringe on what's to come. The French publisher has faced many challenges of late, with dozens of current and former employees accusing the company of facilitating sexual misconduct that led to Yves Gilmont, the chief executive officer, to officially apologize and fire some of the company's top lieutenants. This, of course, has made other developers, some of their best, leave the company due to the fallout. Needless to say, game production of any kind has struggled. Just look at the struggles with Far Cry 6 and how long it took for them to force eventual release. And that game is a moneymaker for the company. With their planned remake of Prince of Persia also delayed indefinitely, and Avatar pushed back to April 2023, what else do we have besides Skull and Bones that is going to head to head with God of War Ragnarok? Skull and Bones looks kind of nice. I like the visuals, but it's going to be another $10 game I pick up after I play God of War. The fanboy in me wants a Beyond Good and Evil 2, no matter what, but the terrors of where Ubisoft is as a company does scare me as I feel that their own identity is in crisis. I don't want an open world game like most Ubisoft games compose themselves of, but I want something more. Will I get it? Who knows? The fact remains that a 9 year old game in development is starting playtesting for a second time since 2008 and looks to still be in pre-production. That alone gives me hope that there is light at the end of the tunnel, eventually. But by the time it does come out, will anyone still want it? That's it for me on this quick update and take on Ubisoft's decision on playtesting and keeping Beyond Good and Evil on life support. Please like and subscribe if you like my videos. Be whole out and great. Take us out of here, and I will see you all in the next upload. Uh-huh.